So we're going to kick into it. First off, thank you <laughs> so All much right. for making time to uh, come in here. But I really would just want to kind of, yeah, quite an interesting bio I was going through your website. But like, like, how did you get into the blues? Oh man, uh, a long time ago. Actually, you know, how I got into music was, as you know, I got into... Uh, I saw the Beatles playing yeah. at a Sullivan show, you know, way back when, and I just went like, wow, what is this? I lived in Flint on Manitoba, way up north, oh, on yeah. one channel, right? So like, what? you're not exposed to anything. I said, like, this is great. And then later, my parents moved us to, uh, to Windsor, Ontario, and we lived in an attic apartment. And uh, the people that, well, we didn't have that much money, and the people that were renting the apartment to us had some kids my age and older, and as I'm going up, those old record players are kind of open. Yeah. Uh, they were listening to Hendrix, Are You Experienced? And I just said, like, what is this? And that must have been almost, like, outer-worthy, like, hearing like, it was Hendrix insane. for the first time. It was insane. It's like, what? What? What is he doing? Like, what is this? And, uh, but interesting thing is, you know, everyone equates Hendrix with you, all of the, uh, you know, the loud, the feedback, the wah, wah, wah. Um, but actually, Hendrix was a great songwriter. Oh, yeah. A great songwriter. And a lot of his stuff was blues-based. A lot of, like, he, I'm pretty sure he played with King Curtis, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I know he played with Little Richard, you know. Um, a lot of his music was blues-based, you know. So I started, you know, researching, and then you listen to the Stones. Well, where did the Stones get this? Where did they get that? You listen to Zeppelin. We won't go into that. Yeah. But Zeppelin got a lot of their stuff from Willie Dixon. Oh, and yeah. And all the Zeppelin fans can... <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, they get pretty heated those Dublin fans. But it's oh yeah. But it's it's true though. Like, like I the first time I heard blues, like I was really into like the punk and the right. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, taking yeah, some yeah, guitar yeah, lessons yeah, and I was yeah. like, teach oh, yeah. you to play this. All right. And he's like, all right, I'll teach you to play this song. But then my next class, he's like, well, listen, like listen to this track. And I think he popped on some like BB King and like that right. was. Like, because it's just so, like, stripped down music stripped and everything down. Yeah, really, yeah. like, evolves yeah. from there. Like, I don't care yeah. what kind of music you're yeah. playing. You're playing, like, an offspring of the blues, right? Thank you. Even punk, you know, and, and I'll have this debate with people. They'll say, well, you know, you play punk. I mean, how's that blues? Or how's that related to blues? You know what? Blues, in my opinion, uh, is a healing music. Oh, yeah. But outside of that, blues is an expression of what you're feeling. Right, you're taking what's going on inside of you and you're putting it out there. Well, so is punk. I mean, there might be a lot of anger and a lot of angst and a lot of the punk, but you're still getting the feeling out. So, everything. Again, I think everything is based on the based on the blues. Oh yeah, rock is based on the blues. Listen oh, to rock sure. records. Everything is. Well, and I also don't think you can get like more punk than like a blues player is sitting out with his yeah. guitar, like, yeah. strumming and, you know, yeah. singing out his feelings, like, yeah. and that's, that's where, I guess, my perspective of music evolved from, like, it's all really, like, a tool of communicating yourself, and that's it. it, yeah, but, so then, so from first hearing, like, Jimi Hendrix, then, like, how did you start becoming a player, like, how, oh, man, I, well, I wanted a guitar, yeah. and, uh, my parents didn't want to buy me a guitar. I was like 10 years old, whatever I was, and uh, 9, 10 years old. They want to buy me an accordion. <laughs> and I said, I'm not playing an accordion. So, you know, you fight, you kick, you scream, you give, yeah. you know, your temper tantrums, whatever. But uh, they relented eventually, and they bought me a guitar. And, uh, you know, I had to play all the, you know, the traditional tunes, Love Me Tender and all yeah. this, to keep them happy. But I'm always listening to Hendrix. I'm always, you know, and then... Sabbath. I'm always listening to that. I was listening to a lot of Detroit bands, you know, at the time. So we lived across the ditch from Detroit, right? Yeah. Listening to MC5, listening to, uh, in that time, well, it wasn't Ten Nugent and the Amboy Dukes, it was the Amboy Dukes, right? Listening to the Stooges. That was before they called it Iggy and the Stooges, yeah. right? It was the Stooges. I'm listening to all that stuff. I'm thinking, wow, this stuff is great. I want to play that. Yeah. And uh, I really came back around, and I love the blues because you're listening to the Stones. Oh, yeah. Where did they get their stuff? Where did Zeppelin get their stuff? You know what? It all goes back to the blues. Oh, yeah. Willie Dixon is a killer, 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 killer blues songwriter. He should be in the... Well, we should all bow down to Willie yeah. Dixon. <laughs> but, you know, but where did it all come from? 
it all came from the blues, but I didn't think that, uh, you know, it took me a while to come back around to the blues where I could give it the, uh, the respect uh, that the genre deserved yeah. because I didn't really necessarily want it to do it in injustice. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. So it took me a while to come back around to it. And do you find that, you know, I guess some of that more, like, rocking stuff, like the Stooges or the things that had influenced you in your early days, do you still, like, find that influence comes out through your playing? Well, it does, no. you know, so it does, it's interesting because I'm not a purist. Yeah. You know, I'm not a purist. And I think whether you're a, a blues songwriter or a rock songwriter or a singer-songwriter or a jazz player, all of the influences in your life are going to come out in your music. And they certainly do in mine. I'm not a purist. I mean, if you listen to my records, you know, some of the music I play is a bit faster. Yeah. Some of it's a bit funkier. Some of it's got, you know, a, an edge to it. Because it all comes out. I mean, we're kind of just molded. We hear all of this stuff oh, every yeah. day. And there's certain things we listen to over and over and over again. Uh, it comes out in our playing. Well, you know, so it, yeah. And do you find, like, that moves, like, the blues forward? Like, because it seems like if everyone was just playing the same couple of riffs and like, oh, this is only you can play to play the blues. All right, all right. Like, well, you know, yeah, there, there's a saying, I play bluegrass as well. Yeah. And there's a saying in bluegrass music, uh, that ain't the way Bill played it. And that means that it ain't the way Bill Monroe played yeah. it, the father of bluegrass music. And, uh, well, that's great. And a lot of people come to my shows and I say, well, Marshall, man, like that, that, that ain't, uh, that ain't Delta Blues, that's not acoustic blues. That's not, what are you doing, right? That's not the way Robert played it. Check it out. I'm not black. Yeah. I'm not poor. <laughs> I'm not Robert Johnson. I'm Marshall Lawrence. I grew up in a very different time, very different socioeconomic structure, you know? Oh, yeah. Blues is about getting your feelings out. So I'm going to do it my way. And to be quite honest with you, man, I think for blues to survive, we need more younger people coming into the blues. Oh. I think the blues, like you were just saying, has to evolve, you know. I think blues, as a form of music, uh, and I'm very passionate about this, has to evolve. I don't want to sound like Robert Johnson, yeah. you know. And one of my favorite players is Tommy Johnson, you know, which predates Robert by about 15 years. And interestingly enough, Robert would say that he was a cousin to Tommy. They weren't related. Yeah. That's how much Robert respected Tommy Johnson. I mean, Robert studied under Charlie Patton. Robert's son House will tell stories about Robert Johnson. You know, when Robert was a little kid and he tried playing and you know at the juke joints and uh, anyway, yeah, it goes on. But the point is, Robert took what he was learning and built on it. So what we need to do as blues players is take what's been given before, show yeah. it proper respect, and build on it. Oh, yeah, and do you find, like, since it's such, like, an art form about expressing yourself, that if, you know, if you were just sticking to playing a traditional style, like, would that not be being true to the blues? Like, if you're just using it to be playing it as, like, a technical player and being, yeah. the, playing the blues technical, like, is that, like, if you're not putting your heart into it, is... Well, you know, the blues, in my opinion... And I always say that because a lot of people, you know, will yeah. disagree with me. A lot of people will agree with me. Um, and I also say that because it's very personal to a lot of people. There are a lot of great technical players out there. Great technical players. And they play it very well. And a lot of people, you know, really like that. And that's cool. And there are players out there that aren't so technical. But when you listen, like, I don't know if you ever listened to uh, Jesse May Hemphill. No. I'm All right. Whoever was out there, check out Jesse yeah. Mayhem Hill, uh, Mississippi Hill Country Blues. Okay. I mean, this stuff is just like, it'll blow you away, you know? It's, I mean, there's room for everything. You know, I take the stance of if you're doing it, if you're doing it with respect and you're doing it honestly, yeah. there's room for anything. Uh, in the blues or any type of music really yeah. you know it all depends what your motivation is and why you're doing it yeah yeah so I kind of want to step back to about sure. I guess 10 years ago when you made the decision that you were going to become a full-time yeah. blues player